this is a, a, a dangerous pastime you have. <laughs> um, and it's not about visiting new places, it's about the travel, the journey, the meeting, the yes. experience. But that looked pretty bad. This was last week's mm. programme mm -hmm. and your car went off a cliff. It did. Um, I mean, there are, I would call, probably call it an occupational hazard. I mean, uh, it's, it's ironic that on a walking expedition, of course, the, the, the biggest danger is, is always going to still be a, um, a road traffic accident. You're pinned, you're still... My arms are uh, still full of metal, I'm afraid, but yeah. uh, it's, it's better. It so this is, you had to be helicoptered out of here to, yeah. to have an operation back here, and that we can see there, that's the x-ray showing the, showing the break. Gosh. So then you went, obviously you had to come back, yeah. you know, halt the filming and everything. And you returned? So Five weeks later, went back out and, and carried on with the walk another two months after that. Yeah. What do people say to you, the locals, when, when you say, right, OK, I'm, I'm actually walking the length of the Himalayas, 1,700 miles? Well, funnily enough, in the Himalayas, particularly in places like India and Nepal, there is a long tradition of people going on pilgrimages, which mm. generally involves mm. people walking long distances. So people just assume that you're on some sort of a, a pilgrimage, and uh, a lot of people um, kind of understood it, which was slightly different to along the Nile, where people generally thought my car had broken down and I was lost. Right. <laughs> and what's the most essential piece of kit when you start? Because there's a lot of planning. You don't just suddenly turn up and think, right, let's just start walking in that direction. Yeah. But what's the most essential bit of kit that you take with you? <laughs> um, well, apart from the usual survival stuff, like having a compass and a whistle... Um, actually... I'd need more than that, I can tell you that now. <laughs> uh, funnily enough, the, the one piece of uh, kit that I always take on, on my expeditions is, um, is like, a, a nice, sort of, clean shirt, really, actually, like a little shirt. I wasn't shirt. expecting you to say, no. why? Well, it's a, you never know when you're going to get a, a phone call from somebody saying, you know, whether it's a governor or a local policeman or, you know, somebody important that you need to go and sort of look... Or the small. Dalai Lama. Or, indeed, the Dalai Lama. Uh, yes, yes. Which, and you met a few times. I did. You? I was very lucky. I was, um, fortunate to be invited into his house and had a good good chat with him. So, uh, so what is that, the, that, the, is that the military training that's uh, had you prepared <laughs> for all eventualities? A little bit of Sandhurst there, yes. Put a good shirt in exactly, just in case. Yes. Um, I mean, the, the army gives you those um, the practical skills, you know, how to sort of make a fire out of nothing and uh, how to survive. But I think ultimately it just gives you that mindset that um, you know you can push yourself. My dad certainly dragged me around to the sort of the wilds of the Peak District when Did I was he? a kid. So um, I think that probably had something to do with it. Well, well when you were in, when you were in the military. Yeah. And they were very, your parents were very pleased with the fact that you'd taken up the military career. Uh, five years, distinguished service, and you got to captain, and then you then you came out, and they were very disappointed about that, weren't they? <laughs> well, I think at the time they they didn't necessarily think that you know why leave a great career you know in in the army to to go into something completely unknown, and and mm. I certainly had my doubts, but it you know luckily it paid off. And now they are actually saying that well you made the right decision. Yeah, I mean they're very supportive. So is it what you wanted it to be when you were that primary school boy and you wanted to explore the world? You said I want to be an explorer. Explorer. Is this what you wanted? Um, I mean, explorer is a, is a kind of a strange term to use in the 21st century, but um, certainly, the, you know, what I'm doing, writing, to, you know, photography, um, and, you know, to have a, a documentary series out is, is a real privilege. So it, it is. It's an incredible uh, lifestyle. Obviously, it has its challenges, but, mm. uh, no, it's great fun. Is one of those challenges having uh, lots of women following you and saying, because I know this is something that you sort of go, what? How, how did this happen? Everybody's suddenly saying this. But, I mean, you have become a bit of a sex symbol. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> It's bizarre, isn't it? You know, who, who'd have thought, you know, a programme about walking would ever be deemed, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, to have that. But, um, no, it, it's, it, is, it is quite... Uh, can be overwhelming at times. But flattering. Very flattering, say. very flattering, yes.